Hey everyone, welcome to the latest Colt Pack and Izzo podcast. Middle of October is here as North Dakota State heads back out of the road. A trip to Carbondale, Illinois. First time we're there since November of 2022 as the Bison will take on the hurting Salukis. Two and four on the season. They've lost three in a row. We'll get to SIU in a moment. Got some Bison news to hit as we record this uh, on a Wednesday. Tim Polisic's press conference was yesterday and (laughs) he said that Cam Miller is 99% Sure, he's going to play in the football game on Saturday. So I'll ask you, is that a near certainty that you believe Cam Miller will play in the game on no, Saturday? No, it's 99%. <laughs> that 1%, yeah, you never know. Open, right? You never know. Well, and you and Mike asked him every which way about, okay, so does that mean you know we're going to see more of Cole Payton? Does Cam not play, knowing what it lies in wait next week with South Dakota State? And Palsik said, he said, well, no, we're not good we're enough. We're not good enough. So we're not good enough for him to sit out the game and have Peyton play. What do you make of what he uh, had to say yesterday on this? Well, you have to say that for one. Yeah. You just can't go into a game right. and say, well, we're just going to rest this guy because we're going to think we're going to walk over this team. With our backup. Right. And that's the wrong message to your team. It's, it's certainly a, the wrong message to the other team, too, by the way. And he also made a point to say, I want my quarterback to play with toughness mm. because, you know, that's the way he played quarterback. I asked him, I go, I did, a, so. did a sprained ankle, Tim, ever keep you off the field? And he goes... Well, no, chicken pox did once, one game, missed a start, chicken pox, but I don't know if he ever sprained his ankle. I should should have done the big (laughs) follow-up. Well, did you ever sprain his ankle? I I would bet he tweaked it at some point. I would imagine so, playing quarterback. That's probably the case. So it lends itself to believe we're going to see Cam Miller play in this game. I'm just curious how effective he is. I mean, Polisic said to you guys, on uh, Monday, I wasn't there as at Sioux Falls for Summit League Basketball Media Day, that he was in a boot. He was tentative on Monday. He said he didn't have to be in a boot, but he was in a boot. He didn't have to be, right? Uh, he was going to get out of the boot yesterday for practice, and again, we're not privy to what practice is going to uh, entail until we see them warming up before the game on, on Saturday of where he's at. I Again, I'll go back to what he said after the game against UND. He could have gone back in, and I, I'll go off just his his reactions, Jeff, he was standing up on the sideline. We had shots of him there. He was signing autographs. If that, if he's in more distress, physical distress, he's not doing any of those things after the game. That's a good point. And I would say this, too. If the Bison do get a lead and, and a pretty substantial lead, if they a comfortable lead, I guess is the word I'm searching for, I would pull him certainly yeah. earlier. Yep. The, the, the hook is going to be earlier. There's no question. I don't. I, I You know, in fantasy football, I have been on – the end where I have one percent chance of winning this, <laughs> and I have won. Yes, yes. So that's the thing. Yeah, you got to account for that, and I think that's football coaches are paranoid humans by nature. So if anything, they're gonna make sure everything's under lock and key on this, right? And they're paranoid about the process of uh, of being routine. The process, of preparation, preparation yeah. and routine. Yeah, they're par- they're paranoid about preparation and routine. Yep. And to go against and say, oh, we might hold this guy out because, you know, Southern Illinois is down to one quarterback, right. and which is an amazing story in itself, that, uh, <laughs> no, you can't go that way. Yeah. No, I mean, he may warm up and not be able to go. Cole Payton better, and he'll be ready. He's yep. a fourth-year guy. He yep. knows what's going on. I think they also said that they're going to have another package ready for Payton on, I don't know what that on means. Saturday. Yeah. So Not does sure. that mean more plays? Does that mean we see him at different, even different spots than we have already? That's lends a lot of questions to be asked on, uh, or to be find out, I guess on. on so, Saturday. so why even say that? Then, right, if you're not going to reveal. Co- correct. <laughs> why even that's, say? That's what I when I heard yeah. that, I'm like, huh? Okay. Again, paranoid humans. Yep. Those football coaches are. Uh, Southern Illinois, Jeff, is in a bad way right now. They've lost three football games in a row. They're down to a third string, true freshman, maybe four string, actually, maybe the best way to say it, uh, he, quarterback, yeah, he, right? Yeah, Nick Hill said four string at the start of the year. Yep. Of where they're at with, with Jake Curry, who's going to be the quarterback for the Salukis on Saturday. Let's just go through the timeline of how this played out. DJ Williams won the job out of camp, transferred in from Murray State. We, we saw him last year. He was not bad. Could move with his legs a little mm-hmm. bit. Yep. Uh, the, the, the quarterback of Murray State. He got injured. Broke his hand, I believe, and he's done for the season. He will not be coming back. Hunter Simmons, now he had another guy. Well, E.T. Harris was hurt in training camp. Okay, in fall camp. So he's out for the year. Hunter Simmons was the backup 
and it started the last couple of games, and then he broke his leg in the game Saturday against Illinois State, which meant Curry had to go in. He threw two picks. I mean, he's playing his first game as a true freshman against Illinois State, and now they're not even done with their QB scenario because Nick Hill, the head football coach, said they're talking to one of their grad assistants about dressing. Well, and I got a story going on this today, Wednesday, that his name is Michael Lindauer. He's a former three-star th- three-star quarterback recruit who started at Cincinnati, so highly touted out of, out of uh, high school. Then he transferred to SIU, didn't play. Obviously, three stars was probably a little inflated. Maybe. But the story is, from my angle, this is like Zeb Nolan yeah, all over bit. again. A little bit. Because when Zeb left NDSU, he became a graduate assistant at South Carolina. South Carolina went through a bevy of injuries at quarterback, and they put... He, he, Zeb started. In the, in in him, him in active duty. Yeah. <laughs> he came in and started a game in the SEC. It was against, I believe, an FCS team, if I remember right, too, a couple years ago. Yeah, he had six touchdowns and one interception. <laughs> He almost played better at South Carolina than he did at NDSU. So he had more touchdown passes yeah, there he than he did ever at NDSU. That's for darn sure. So then Zeb goes in, in, into the uh, – he he resumes his uh, grad, grad assistant in 2022 duties. at South Carolina, <laughs> goes to a high school job in 2023, and now is the quarterback's coach at, at Murray. Murray State. So in is there a chance that this guy plays – I don't on know. Saturday, they're, they're still trying to get him eligible. Okay, they're going through some stuff. They're trying go to the get, clearinghouse there, trying to get a waiver okay. and compliance. So okay. I just, holy cow, I don't think so. I, wow, what if you're him? I mean, <laughs> have you been? I mean, as a grad assistant, you're grinding away in the film. Right, room. you're not working you're doing out. Cut-ups. You right. are not. Yeah, are you in shape? Like, how good a shape is he in? That's what I wonder. I'd be a little nervous yeah. just going. And plus. It's, you're not playing McKendry University here. No, this is North Dakota State. You're it's playing some physical dudes. It's a different animal on that. So with that backdrop for SIU, this is a team we've gotten used to them being really good, winning seven, eight games a season, making the postseason. I mean, they're trending now that this could be, the bottom could fall out of this No, Jake team. Curry might not be a bad quarterback. Yeah, he's a know. true freshman, and so you're assuming because he's a true freshman that he might not be that great, but uh, Nick Hill this week compared him to Nick Baker, he goes. He thinks he has Lofty, that same moxie. Yeah, okay. He said his uh, the situation last week wasn't too big for him. Sometimes you look in guys' yeah. eyes and and the you see you know a deer in the headlights, and he's not ready for this moment. He goes, I didn't see that in okay. him. So he may throw four touchdown passes on Saturday. I mean, he may be the deal. First time in 35 years the Salukis are starting a true freshman at quarterback. Brendan Pringer was the last to do it. A walk on who started at Northern Iowa on November the 11th, 1989. SIU uh, lost that game 38-14. to 14. This reminds me a little bit of NDSU, and I'm putting in my five things column. Okay. You know, the, the much-anticipated, highly acclaimed, award-winning five things column <laughs> yes, every clearly, Friday. Yes. Clearly. That reminds me of 2000 when the Bison were in the Division II playoffs. Greg Gorder wasn't available. They lost Ryan Johnson, and they were down to true freshman Jason Jordan. At quarterback, they, wow. I think it was just one guy. Yeah. And I remember Bob Babbage considering just direct snap to to Lamar Gordon. Yeah, that could work that too. Route. That would work. But that's maybe <laughs> if if Jake Curry gets hurt on yeah. Saturday, your only next option is direct snap. Yeah, that's your I, I, an ankle sprain away from doing I something suppose, like that. Yeah. I suppose I as a being, I, I should do my homework and find and look in the bio if some running back or tight end like was a former high school quarterback. Yeah. It's it's not the situation you want to be in with a team that's coming into no. play. That is everything is is trending in the and, wrong and, direction. You know, here. Dom, and we're sitting there talking about offense, but that's what, yeah, I want to hit that. Defensively, SIU's fallen off a cliff here. Oh my goodness. I mean, okay, they gave up seventeen to Austin P his second game of the year. Yep. That's pretty good. Yep. Then it was twenty eight to Incarnate Word. Still not horrible, right? But then it's thirty eight to Southeast Missouri State. Yep. Then it's at home. Yep. Then it's 42 at South Dakota in a game they were never in. Nope. And then last week was not good. Illinois either. State, yeah. 45. Right. Although, SIU outgained them. Right. Which is kind of weird. Statistical oddity there, but they were never in that game either. Illinois State. And, and they must have had a lot of garbage yards yeah. or something. That, that, they, well, they had, I think, was it you said seven drives that they didn't get anything inside out of? The, inside yeah. in the 20, yeah. got one touchdown. They just couldn't, they couldn't capitalize there. So I'll throw the devil's advocate or the you know glass half full jar at you. 
Maybe they play this. They play with a ton of comp. We're going to rally around this guy. Maybe, maybe to try and save our season. This is going to be the guy. That's what. If Nothing you're in the issue, you got to fight against that. No one that okay. We don't have no. We have no tape on this guy outside of what he did in the second half last week against Illinois State. This is a great test of the maturity yeah, of this team for NDSU yeah. because you have South Dakota State next week. And ESPN. You, and you've been playing well the last two weeks, and everybody's patting you on the back. You're here. coming off a win over, I, you know, a huge I, win. Huge win yep. over University of North Dakota, yep. where you got boat race the year before. You turn the tables on them, yep. feeling good. Yep. Uh, what, what was Tim's comment on Tuesday with the defense? Uh, you got to keep eating crumbs, gotta stay away from crumbs. the big meal. Yeah. <laughs> That's a foul. And McFeely comes out and goes, <laughs> No, we in the media, yeah. we can eat the big meal. <laughs> yes, we can look at it. <laughs> That's a bowlism, by the way. Eating crumbs, eating bread. That, that's a. I think Craig had what, that too. What was Tyler Roll? A lunch bucket, no, yeah. a chop wood, carry yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, in that same vein. But that's the, the flip side of this of what SIU could do, Jeff. I mean, they could. We've seen it before when the Bison have gone on the road in a game where they're heavily favored, and maybe it's a sleepy environment. We don't know how many people are going to come. We've been to Carbondale, gosh, five, six, seven times. And it's never been a home no, field advantage. It's never, never that. Looks like the weather's going to be really good on Saturday. I, who knows? I don't know what kind of environment that's going to be on Saturday. We just don't know. And again, I, I go back to the leadership of this team. Yeah. Th- this is a test for that. Can you prepare and can you get up and can you play to your ability yeah. on a, against a team that's sliding like this? Yeah, I they, mean, human nature is you look at the scores. I'm sure they're, they're looking at the film. I mean, that's what you do all week. They still have dudes. Keontae Lewis is a, is a as good a wide he's receiver a, as they're going to find. He was a third leading receiver yeah. in Wisconsin last year. You're going to see him out there. He can make. He made a touchdown against South Dakota. Scored against Illinois. He's out there. You can watch him defensively. They still have Ben Bogle's one of the best linebackers out there that they can bring that. But that you could say everything you want offensively. I thought you hit the nail on the head. If there's anything we've been able to count on in SIU, it's defense, and that's not been the case this season. Keontes Lewis is third in the country in receiving yards. Yeah, he's all right. He's good. He's a good player. That's, that's a good to keep that, an eye on. You know, you live by the portal and you die by yeah. the portal. Yeah. And SIU got to this point by, you know, that's what Nick Hill said. It. He makes no bones about it. That's what we're going to do. That's what kind of program we're going to be, and exactly how they're at right now. You couldn't anticipate having three quarterbacks get her. I mean, no one would ever anticipate that. That's the spot they're in. NDSU has five, four quarterbacks now. Yes. Jacob Kilzer has been moved to yep. wide receiver spot. So it's... So he'd be the emergency if you're four right. got hurt. Correct. Yeah. If, you're, if you're wondering on that, that would be the depth chart, how far they'd have to go down for NDSU. But even without Miller, even without Cole Payton, I still think they have a lot of confidence Nathan in Nathan Hayes. Hayes. All right. Yep. From what we've seen early on, yeah, I think they'd be a okay uh, there. I do want to talk a little bit on the Bison defense because uh, <laughs> Paul Sig said it after the game. He couldn't wait to take questions on the run defense. I will throw this at you. I think we talked about it on Hot mic on Monday. Of all the years that we have lamented about trying to rotate at the linebacker spot, uh, they haven't been able to do that with Luke Wirtz's injury. And Nathan Nathaniel Staling was out uh, for the game this past Saturday. It was Kubitz and Austin Altopeter came in when the game got out of hand. Uh, it's Nick Kubitz is playing his best football as a Bison right now, Jeff. There's no doubt about it. No the doubt, last two games, no doubt, two and a half. And I think you gotta you gotta keep rolling with what you have. Yep. Just because I think Luke Wirtz came, you know, I don't know if he's back or not. Back problems are an issue, man. And he had this three years ago. Right? Yeah, it cost him his whole season. And actually, you and I talked about it on your Hot Mike show that back problems. Are you sure you want to risk your quality of life here? Again, I've gone through back surgery. It's not fun. Mm. It's not fun. It's not something to dink around with. This is six year of football too. Yep. He's a captain, but that's the that's the hard part, you know. If he wants to play, that's how do you tell a guy no? That's the part. Well, you tell him no because we're rolling with our best well, guys. Yeah. That's I how mean, I mean starting, yes. I mean if you want if he can play and help you, that's I, that's yeah, a, I, I'm sorry I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's a bigger discussion though, I think, there because I'm with you. You're rolling right now. This is what we got. Well, We're going to keep gonna this say, going. Well, I, well, he's a special teams guy. Yep. He always been for a long time, so you could probably say, well, we'll roll with you on special teams. Yep. But our defense right now yep. is mar- is markedly, not yep. remarkably, but markedly better yep. the last two weeks than it was yep. the first four. Defensive line has looked that part as well, especially the interior. Dutenheffer, Mostart, Heisman have been really good the last two weeks. Alta Peter can hit, man. Yeah, he can lay the boom too. He's yep. got some punch to him. Yep. 
And you're gonna and again, Palsik said they have that blowback. He kept saying that. Alta Peter and, St- and Staling bring that to the and Sibamana bring that gully as well. They bring that to the table at the linebacker spot where we were not seeing any pop plays on defense the first three and a half weeks. We've seen it the last two and a half. Yeah, you know it when you see it on the pop. Like when Joe Mays was putting the pop yeah. to people, you just you could see it, you could feel it, you could hear it. Colton Hegel, same way. Hegel, Hegel same when he hit when, you. When, when he put the pop to it, you could see it, you could feel it, you could hear it. Jabril Cox, when he hit you, you were going backwards, and they've got guys of that ilk that are playing that way defensively I'm not right now. Comparing nope. Alto Peter to these guys yet, nope. but nope. potential's there. Sam Young hits hard at two. He's, I mean, he's, he's doing that. What a great position switch there. Yep. No brainer. That that's been one of the reasons why yep. they've been better on run defense. He oh. feel he feels it like Hegel. Not maybe exactly like Hegel, yep. but he's got that sort of same it's flying out there mentality yep. for sure. Yeah. That's the the to me, if you're looking at anything in the bison defense, you point to that of why they've looked so different the last two weeks. Why they look like the bison vintage defense that we've grown accustomed to over the last 15 years, what we've seen there. Yeah, there's, there's a formula. Yeah. There's no doubt. And Nick Hill on, was interesting on his press conference this week. He goes, I put on the film like 10 years ago. <laughs> I think when he was a GA yeah. or something like that. And he goes, they look the same. <laughs> the guys look the same. It's like just different names, yeah. but everything looks the same. Yeah. And that's the mark of a good program when you can continue to be successful right. And looking the same, yep. and they found that 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 again. I hate to use the word formula, but they found it, and and why 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 change from it? Yeah, it's been working, and I'm mm-hmm. curious to see how it carries over here for uh, the next two. I will mention this here before we we wrap though with the game next week. We now know it's going to be a prime time game, Colpack with South Dakota State. We'll find out Monday if it's either at six thirty on ESPNU or seven o'clock. On ESPN two, and I I would hope selfishly it's ESPN two because we would get more viewers on WDAY right. than ESPN U would. I'm just gonna say it right now, and I don't care what anybody has to say about that. Um, what do you first off night game? What do you make of this? We if everybody wins this weekend, it's one versus two in prime time. We haven't had a prime time home regular season game in eight years. Well, your 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 online um, poll yeah. says. The fans prefer seven over six thirty, so they want the later the better. Yep, seventy one percent said they want a seven p.m. start time. They were over eleven or two thirty. Are the other options on that? Oh, it's a huge week. I mean, it's being kicked off on Thursday night with my book signing at Mendak <laughs> Market on my Dots Pretzels book. The Food Network may or may not catch that live. I don't know about yeah, that. Maybe, maybe pick that. I up. I should maybe no. ask them, huh? <laughs> so it, that, that's where it begins. But. Yep. Tailgate will probably what if the game's at seven start at one. See, this goes back to a theory you had years ago of opening it up the day before. You know, like yeah. the SEC, like what what that would be like. That well, just scene police to do that, right? You got. I guess you got to hire more what, police. But what that scene would be like for a seven p.m. night game if you were to open it, let's say at ten, even no, even five o'clock Friday. Oh, five p.m. Friday. Boy, can like, people the, party that long? Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, but they, they can in the South. We know that. Yeah. Uh, for this particular football game, probably, right? Or even if you want to go, what you said, 10 a.m. Saturday morning? I know that. Yeah, they would sign up for that in a heartbeat to do that. <laughs> That's a long that day. That is a oh long day is exactly right. I mean, we do our pregame show at 10 a.m. Yep. And by the time these night games come around. <laughs> you need a Mountain Dew, don't you? <laughs> well, I've had like six coffees just to, st- you know, but it, it's a long day. It is a long day. I can't yep. imagine these people drinking alcohol all day uh, and then going, oh my goodness. How about for the Jacks? Did it, it's Division One? They don't come up that day, do they? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't so. think so, right? I would think they would still come up Friday evening, you know, get up here about six o'clock or something. I think right? Grand Forks is about as far as you want to bust. Now, NDSU yep. is going to be going an hour at Southern Illinois, and Tim brought that up yep. this week. Yep. Because we got to get up ready. You got to be prepared for an hour bus ride. Where yep. are they staying at? So Cape, Cape Girardeau? Cape Girardeau is where they will stay. They'll fly in, I believe, to Marion and then they'll drive to Cape Girardeau because that's just that's the hotel that they have that has the best uh, facilities. That Here's a you know, shameless you, plug you, for you your st- The Saluki Inn and Best yeah, Western is work. not going to work. In but it's Carbondale. a shameless plug for your story you're working on because the amount of miles that goes part of it as well of the travel of what they're doing this year. This is my first year was 06. And they had seven thousand. Okay, is that just right? North of seven thousand because they were six out of seven weeks they were on the road that year. That's because they went to California. 
They went to Utah. No, no, no. Here, let's start. Let's okay. we got to come. Okay, the, go for let's it. Start at Ball State. Yeah, it was Indiana. the first first okay. Division One FBS win. Yeah. First FBS win. Then it was Georgia Southern. <laughs> I forgot that. Georgia then Southern. Then it was home for Mississippi Valley. The one home game in that in that stretch. In that stretch. Then it was to the University of Minnesota. Okay. Then it was to Stephen F. Austin. Oh, I forgot that one. Then it was to Southern Utah. Cedar City. Yep. And then it wrapped up. Is that seven games? Yeah, mm-hmm. six and seven. Yep. It wrapped up at Cal Davis where they fell oh, behind 24-0 at halftime. <laughs> and if any program and a team had say, you know what? We've been on the road yeah, for a yeah, month yeah, and a half. Yeah. We're done. Wrap it up. Yeah. No, it they, they, they rallied 28 yep. straight to win that game. Yeah. And so this year's team is over 5,000, correct? Correct. Sorry so it, it would be, in, uh, oh, God, I had this figure. We're on eighth or ninth, I think, if it was FBS. And that includes the Big Ten. No kidding. And the ACC who are <laughs> They're going out. Yeah. UCLA played, uh, or Washington played Rutgers a couple weeks ago. Seattle to New Jersey is not close. University of Minnesota is going to Los Angeles this week to play UCLA. USC just went to Minnesota. Wow, that's wild that they're that highly rated in that. Yeah, so the Bison this uh, this year will be putting in 5,120 miles. Man, oh man. Uh, it would put them ninth in the FBS. Holy cow. Washington is a leader at 8,312. Yeah, figured that. And NDSU ranks it right behind Miami at 5,275. <laughs> and we're ahead of Utah, 48, 4,841. Oh, I think we had Boulder. Is like Colorado, Tennessee. Johnson City. They still Murray. Have, got they Murray. Still go to Murray yet. this week with Carbondale. Vermillion's in there. Uh, who am I forgetting that they played a road game at? Well, it'd be SIU. Oh, no, uh, normal. They had oh, Illinois, Illinois State, State in there yeah, right. and, and as well. So that's a lot of time on the road. Next year, they're going to probably maybe top it, Colt, back as they go to South Carolina and Tennessee back-to-back weeks next year to start the season. Hmm, I so, better add that up. Right? That's going to be some big-time mileage on. And that's an intriguing part of this as well. I, and the whole thing of how they get where they – I know you – did you talk to Jedry? I'm assuming you yeah. did for his story and – uh of how they do this, of getting everywhere, it's yeah. He's got to get on. He's got to deal. truck it on Wednesday night to Colorado and J- and Johnson City. They got to leave Wednesday night. Yeah, that's almost like our TV truck did. Our TV truck left Tuesday for Johnson. You City. know, we should do a story on our TV truck. It's quite yeah. the operation. I know it'd yeah. be self serving, but I also think it's a major part of this program as far as visibility, no doubt, statewide, and how we do it. Yep. How we take this this huge satellite trailer. And and our four dedicated dudes that get in yep. there, yep. and and somebody's got to drive it. They rotate, yeah, because uh, a couple of them have licenses to drive it. Because you got to have a special license to drive it too. So, yeah, it's uh, that is what just part of the people just want to see the game. They don't care about you know how it gets. So we're there. doing the Murray game, right? We are doing. We're not doing this week yep. uh, because it's the game of so the week. So I will but. think I'm going to do. We're going to. I'll I'll document that Murray trip yeah. and what our guys go through. Yep. I think that's you know I know it's self serving. But I also think it's a story worthy, too. Yeah, they're leaving on Wednesday of that week, which is a fairly busy week for us when they get down. Yep. Because uh, I think we have our first Bison basketball game that week, too. So there's plenty going on. I wonder how many times do they get flipped off going through some of these <laughs> other Valley towns? I, I don't think they're there. I think Bison they might get, suck. I think they might get flipped off for other reasons. Bison suck. <laughs> I don't think it's I hate for, you guys. It's for that particular uh Reason we're gonna do our debut bracketology not this week but the week of the Jacks game so we're we're halfway here but we're starting to get some clear picture I think I'm looking at Montana well, certainly the Valley yeah I'm thinking at Montana State as well do they lose a game this year that's the intriguing part to me they have Idaho this week in Bozeman and they have Montana the brawl of the wild game is in Bozeman they could potentially run the table Colbeck. yeah I, I agree. Maybe twelve and zero with an FBS Montana win. Montana certainly shown to have some kinks in the armor on yep. defense. Idaho gave up forty eight to Weber. Idaho's lost a couple games now uh, as well. You got to throw that in. They lost with one being an FBS game. I think the winner of the Bison Jacks game is likely the two seed, and the loser could be the three. I'm not USD's game, Jeff. That got wiped out with Portland State. And scheduling Northern is going to come back to bite them. I'm telling you right now. Montana State, if it runs a table, will be the number one seed. Yes, it'll be 12 and FBS 0. win. Yes, yep. I think the Jacks Bison winner will be the two. They'd be 11 and one likely. And don't forget, by the way, South Dakota will throw could throw a wrench in this because the Coyotes play at Brookings in two weeks or three weeks as it is, and then they play they host the Bison 
in the final game of the season. USD will be heard from one way or the other, I think. I'm looking at the stats perform top 25 poll. Yeah. I'm looking at six quality teams. Yeah, that's about right. Which, by the way, we... So... How many can win it? Three? Three? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where I was at. You're going to have 18. That's the way the FCS is now. Yep. Mountain West. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Maybe she'll be watching the game. Gloria Navarez, you think, next Saturday if, night. If I were NDSU, I would send a private plane and fly her up here for the game oh. next week. What is it about these two programs you don't want? Mm. You got to get them on campus. Yep. You got to get the commissioner here. One way or the other. Yep. yep. Now, T- you know, if, yeah. if there's a if there's a woman that looks like a commissioner walking <laughs> through the indoor facility <laughs> a week from Friday, oh, man. I, I think we should stake it out. Like Scooby Doo it here. I think we should stake, stake it out. out. But you're right. I mean, just getting a body here, especially for that national television sold out crowd. What else do you want? What else? You've been hammering UTEP. Land grant. You've been hammering UTEP, and rightfully so. Okay, here's who you just added, who had nobody at their game and got their butts kicked. They're all in five. Or you could have these two schools who have rabid fan bases. They're on national television. And by the way, they probably kick the crap out of everybody in your league right now. Right? Montana State already beat New Mexico. Yep. Tell me who the Bison of the Jacks couldn't beat in that league. <clears throat> Maybe Air Force. Silence. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, right? Maybe yeah. Air Force. Maybe UNLV is not bad this season. But the Bison would, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bison of the Jacks would be favored. You're in, wrapped up about I am this. Now. Yeah. The Bison of the Jacks would be favored in seven of those nine games. Air Force would be tough. Right now, as FCS team. Yes. Yes. Wyoming? Palsek would tell you they, they would, the Bison would beat Wyoming right now. Uh, Hawaii? Nevada? No. Mm-hmm. no. Utah, well, Utah State's leaving. Um, One administrator told me, not from here, told me that he thought that the Mountain West Commissioner panicked with UTEP. Oh, we need to add somebody. We need to add somebody. Texas. Texas school. It certainly seems it. By the way, things have been real quiet here over the last week and a half because the Pac-12 is waiting um, to get feedback for its media rights and what they're going to get paid on that. Uh, and I think everything's at a Tarleton still out there. Texas State is already told the Mountain West no. I think they're hoping for a Pac-12 invite. That's what Texas State is, and obviously Sac State is going full court press on trying to get a. Pac-12 I think it's invite. good sign for NDSU that there is silence. Okay, because maybe they are considering yeah. this route, even though Greg Sankey from the SEC <laughs> say no more F- FCS. Yep. Yep. Well, you know what? Tough. You you just added Kennesaw State, and that's not our fault. They added Missouri State too. We know what most state, and I I like the people in in Springfield, but we all know the the backstory on that. So I it, that's a good way to end it, I think. And we'll yep. hit this next week with uh, when the Jacks game comes on. But if you're looking for high level college football in a great environment with a lot of people there and eyeballs on it, isn't that what we're what we've talked about? Isn't that college of, football? Well, yeah, but what I'm talking about in this day and age, yeah. you want. Great environment. You want people to watch the game, and you want the teams to be competitive. I'm not sure what else you want. From what those two. sounds better down the line in five years? Nevada at Montana State, Nevada at North Dakota State, South Dakota State at Nevada, or I like Utah? Going Nevada. <laughs> well, we'd have to go to Utah, by the way, if the Bison get into the Mountain West. <laughs> if you were to survey college football fans across the country, how yeah. many could tell you what Utah stands for? Uh, are you saying college football fans? Like, how hardcore are we talking? Well, no, no. I'm just talking, you know. 30%. Okay, let's end it. (laughs) Uh, Reminder to everybody, we will be live in Carbondale Saturday morning for Bison Game Day, 10 a.m. Jeff, myself, Sam Getzinger. I believe Sean Fredericks is going to join us as well, former all-time great Bison linebacker. Uh, But the game is exclusive to ESPN+. Plus. It's the start of two straight weeks where we do not have the game on WDAY. D-I-Z-Z-O yeah, at do, do, not, do not call me. Do not call the station. I got your number. Anybody want yeah, his number? You can email me. That's fine. But we do not have the games for the next two weeks. But uh, we'll have our full crew there. Bison game day, post-game show. Uh, full coverage from Mike and Jeff on Inform.com. We'll have you covered as well on WDAY. For the Bison and the Salukis. Bison have struggled down there. You remember, you saw them lose in 2005. The, the, the win streak ended there and 
in 2021. It's not like they've they've hammered this team down there. Yeah, they could just play that film. That should right? get your attention. I get him out with Nick Baker, who we had no idea who he was, won the game. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest Kolpak and Izzo podcast. Thanks, everybody, for listening.